go. Shut up, number two. Shut up time. Here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. This shout out is for our friend, Nori. I think I'm saying that right. It's N-O-R-I. Food trip. Uh, in case you didn't guess, it's a food channel. Um, also music and surfing, uh, but I've seen more food on there than anything. And, well, we are very picky eaters. I love seeing food from other cultures, other places. I'm always curious about what other people enjoy. Um, so check them out, like, share, comment. And don't forget to enjoy spooky season. Say hello to the ghosts. And remember, tomorrow we will be doing a live where you can share your ghost stories. If I can figure out how to do a panel, that is. Wish me luck. Bye. Okay. So we are currently at Wicksville. And as you can see, it's dark as shit. Do you want to wait, Angel? Till we can actually see? It's a lot of cacti. That's why I was asking, do you want to wait? Because we're not going to be able to see all of it. Oh. Dad, do you want to go over there and try the door? Or do you want to just call it a night and just try the cemetery in town? Let's do the cemetery in town. Okay. We will try to come back out here again, though. But maybe when we can see the cacti. All right. Well, it's either that or we wing it, Angel. What do you want to no, do? I'm with you guys. Okay. There we go. All right. Welcome to October and Halloween. Again, just to remind everybody, we are throwing a lot of videos at you this month. Maybe next month. Maybe the next three months. <laughs> we don't really know what we're doing. We never know what we're doing. We don't do a lot of uh, thinking in advance. Uh, we avoid the P word at all costs. It's kind of a jinx for us. Anyway, uh, we need to do our shout out for today's video. And today you're getting an extra bonus video. The Bud Files Failure. You'll see what I mean when you watch the video. Her shout out is now. Shout out time. Here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. This shout out is for our friends, African Dreaming. And it says, welcome to our channel. We are a married couple. That's from East Texas and now live in East Africa. Uh, they've traveled and lived in other countries and learned about cultures and themselves. And they talk about it all. They are a fun couple. Uh, very interesting to see different cultures and uh, places. Um, if you haven't seen their channel, check them out, please. Like, share, comment, and have a good day. Mr. Bud, tell us the story. Well... Rapid City, as we know, over a hundred years old, does have its own share of uh, paranormal slash ghost adventures. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it does have, uh, you know, besides the, the stuff that we run into being, you know, sensitive and stuff with the, the flood flames and stuff, there are several locations within the city that... Uh, had, had sightings. Um, one of them is a rather old, old hotel downtown. It's called the Hotel Alex Johnson. It was named after a uh, fellow that came through the town on one of the first trains. And uh, they were trying to figure out what to call this hotel. And so when they looked up the, uh, the register, it was the first name in the book, Alex Johnson. Um, a couple of the uh, ghost crews I know have been through there. The uh, tax team came out. Uh, according to what I remember, they had a uh, suicide where somebody supposedly jumped out from, I think it was the sixth floor. And uh, so they were checking to see if uh, there's any residual ghosts or anything. Uh, they also checked the rumor of a 13th floor because... The buildings, for some reason, don't like to have a 13th floor. Very so, superstitious. <laughs> so lucky to everybody but us. Exactly. 
We love 13. And every time I fill up for the gas, I'm going to the pump 13. Figure that one out. Um, they also did a, uh, when they were doing their investigation, there was uh, some crews that worked in the basement. Um, <clears throat> interestingly enough, Rapid City, in its past, used to have these almost you call them trenches around some of the buildings and it was like a whole extra floor that you could do business with a, a business and most of them are now sealed up and buried some still keep them um, where I have my eyeglasses done uh, precision eye care their basement still intact I guess although with all the spiders I wouldn't go down there I believe we show at least one of the downward stairs on our um, car show video, which will be put up probably in November at this point. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, other uh, incidences that I've known of um, at the downtown Hardee's uh, is haunted. I guess somebody got shot and killed mm -hmm. in the walkway, and one of my former managers... Uh, got the stuff and scared out of him, I guess. He was working a, a graveyard shift, the mm -hmm, graveyard, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, all eight baskets on the fryer dropped and started cooking. Just wanted to get the food done. Exactly. Get out the fryer. Uh, he wound up locking himself in the office and was holding his gun. I don't understand that. Backup. What's it's the a gun ghost. going to do? <laughs> it's a ghost. It could go through the door, too. Yeah. Hello. Hello, human. Um, one of the stories that we did get that uh, was kind of interesting, <clears throat> back after the flood had happened, and they were taking care of some of the older houses in what you would almost call the, the rundown part of town. It's now where the parks are, down by the Civic Center. Um, a couple of the firemen, they, there's a... Uh, <laughs> It's almost like a, a dare game to see who could stay in the house the longest. These two firemen started a fire in the house. And then That's they when, sat, when they were practicing, right? Yeah. Okay. They sat in the main floor while the house was starting to burn around them. And they saw a ghost show up inside that house. <laughs> and uh, both of them were on the in the service of the Rapid City Fire Department for... Well over 30 years, both swear they still saw the same person, and to this day they don't know who she was, but they're like, there's a lady still here, another ghost of the, of the town. Um, there used to be a hotel called Harney, one of the first hotels in Rapid City actually, dating back to the early 1900s. Um, it was torn down shortly after the flood, uh, I think in 76, if I remember right. Uh, rumors were that it was well haunted as well. Uh, people would see uh, people go in and out on the second floor. Uh, the, the one that we both uh, have seen quite a bit from is a fellow named Hokey Jack. Hokey Jack was one of the city's first constables. <clears throat> and... Uh, Interestingly enough, he lost his hands when he was a minor in an accident. And so he had, just like Candyman, hooks for hands. And he would go around through the town, and uh, he had it rigged up nice that he could actually uh, light the lights along the street on his patrols. And he's still doing his job out there, going around town. Second floor of the uh, the place that they used to have, there was a bar called Hokey Jack's. Now, irony, uh, a church owns the building, and they use it for offices. <laughs> um, of course, there's also a couple warehouses downtown that, uh, back when the town first got its start, the railroad was really big. Uh, there was a big celebration one year when, on the 4th of July, the first train came into Rapid. But there's a lot of warehouses in the downtown district. Uh, some of them are still in use today. Uh, some of them, like a uh, Allied Warehouse, and uh, there is one that the Crouch Line had downtown 
and it's now used as a medical supply. I guess every once in a while they'll have uh, an interesting person show up in their back room, <laughs> and uh, it's it's a worker. They've been working diligently for over uh, sixty plus years, um, but those sites there uh, attract a bit of attention. Um, now the other part of the thing that uh, makes the town kind of unique, and uh, I just discovered this the other day, is that besides our three primary cemeteries in Rapid City, um, there are four others that we've discovered. Uh, one of them is out by our airport, and apparently there was a church out there, not a, uh, a very big church, uh, I think they wound up moving the... Uh, the congregation all left and moved down to Hermosa, if I remember right. Uh, Bench was the last name for the uh, the guy that ran the church. Um, very few people were ever buried out there. I think there was like maybe six, five or six. And uh, most of them got moved to what was known as Evergreen. Evergreen was one of the ones that uh, was out in Rapid Valley. And it, it, was, Valley. it was not a bad uh, little cemetery. They uh, were set up close to what is now uh, Highway 44, which goes out to our airport. Um, <clears throat> the interesting part of it is that it was set up about the same time that our Mountain View Cemetery was set up. Uh, the problem that they had there is that you were dealing with a private organization that wanted to set up their cemetery, whereas the city wanted to have their own. Um, eventually, <laughs> call it kind of underhanded, dirty dealing, they wound up having that road get blocked off during road construction, and so nobody could get to it. Uh, the city also wound up uh, basically taking control of it because they didn't pay their taxes Oops. and sold off several parts of the acreage. Uh, nearby that, there's a cement uh, company that uh, works with building guardrails and stuff like that. And there's a lot of construction going on up there as well. But eventually, uh, from what I was reading, several of the headstones uh, popped up. Several people were reburied at the Mountain View. However, there are some people that say that not everybody was moved, which means there's probably still bodies out there under the ground. Probably. Which probably leads to a chance of, uh, you know, somebody not being at rest. The uh, next one that I did hear about um, was in North Rapid. There's a big Catholic church up there called uh, St. Teresa's. And from uh, one of the books that was being read... Uh, there was a, a family called the uh, Barons that were the basically the undertakers for the city for almost 70 years. The company's still in business, it's just no longer in the family. Um, according to their paperwork, uh, there was a body or two that were buried by that cemetery um, up by that church. The interesting part is that it mentions that they were buried close to where school property is. Now, that means one of two things for me. One, that's either Garfield School, where I went, or that is where the, uh, the old juvenile detention center now is. That used to be a Catholic uh, junior high, if you will. Um, but, of course, those people, once the big cemetery was opened up, they... Uh, exhumed the bodies, moved them out to the main cemetery. Or at least moved the headstones, because the that's the usually what they do. Because right. the but, bodies are much more expensive. Right. Um, segment four, there was a, a Jewish cemetery set up off of uh, 8th Street, up at the very high point. Um, from what I understand, it wasn't very big as well, maybe 12 bodies. And uh, they were moved over to the... Uh, over to the Mountain View Cemetery as well, added to the, uh, the collection. The one that uh, directly preceded 
uh, Mountain View was the one up on Signal Hill, a.k.a. Star Village Hill. Uh, when I was doing the research on the cemeteries, that one there, the hill, the hilltop is still, it still has company. Oh, yeah. Um, we lived we, up there, I remember. Yeah, we, we would drive around the base of the hill, drive around on top of the hill. Apparently, where the old folks' home is, figure that funny. one out. Uh, the uh, cemetery was on that plateau, and it was called Plateau Cemetery. Uh, and where the water tower is, is also where the cemetery was. And the people that ran the Rapid City Journal, uh, Alice Gossage, was instrumental in getting Mountain View open because she said it's so hard for people to get up to that cemetery. I imagine it is a pain in the butt to get up that yeah. hill in the winter. Yeah. And this is before they even paved those roads. Can you imagine what it was like on dirt roads? No. No. <laughs> and the rain and the wind and the snow. Um, now, the last one that uh, I do remember reading about, and uh, it dates to some of the history that's going on in our country today, we had the uh, Indian school over off of Sioux San. And uh, interestingly enough, the school ran until about the 1930s, and then it was a uh, sanitarium for the Native Americans. Um, and apparently, if any of the, uh, the children died, they would be buried up there. Now, sadly, there's no markers, there's no, no uh, real location. They know it's in this one area. They're not going to go over and dig it up for, you know, uh, religious reasons. Uh, but they are working to set up a kind of memorial, which I think is going to be kind of cool when it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, for the area up on top for the, the Indian school. But those are the main cemeteries that we know of. Here and those stories Rapid here City. Yeah. In our, for our hometown. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, the thing that we look at is that since we know the history of the area, obviously the ghosts know who we are. <laughs> and when we go into certain areas around Halloween and around... Yeah, the veil, veil thinning. Yeah. And then for us, when it's around the time of the flood every year, uh, there's a walk that takes part for the Rapid City flood. Um, you, there are certain areas inside this town you can go there and even today 50 years later you still get that weird feeling that you know and for them it's pretty much the same thing because to them it's still 1972 you know kids are still playing out in their yards by the trailers kids are still up by the house they're playing in the creek there's uh, several bridges along this town you kind of get that that vibe there's several parks. Uh, after the flood, the city did a really cool job, and they uh, turned all that land along the creek into parks and recreation areas so nobody would sleep in the floodplain ever again. And to that right, you know, you look at the people who, you know, there's people to this day, they're 70 years old, they still won't sleep anywhere where there's a floodplain. It's it's ingrained into them. They they experience that once and they'll never do it again. Right. Can't say if I blame them. Yep. But again, uh, happy Halloween, folks. We'll be doing this all month, and uh, we'll talk to you later. This is Joe, the bearded historian, and Sue on the backdrop. Bye. Bye. Bye.